In this video, we're going to learn how to find the B field of an infinite wire. And so let's say that we have a, an infinite wire. So it stretches from all the way negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. And it's carrying a current I. And what we want to know is the magnetic field at some distance away from this wire, at some radius R away from it. Well, because this problem has infinite symmetry, we can use Ampere's law to solve it. And so Ampere's law, remember, is just that the integral over some closed loop of the magnetic field dotted with dr, often called dl, is equal to mu naught times the current that penetrates through that loop, or the surface that that loop makes. Now, because this is an infinite line, this whole thing has cylindrical symmetry or circular symmetry if you look at it as if you're looking straight at the wire. And so the curve that we want to integrate the magnetic field over to find the magnetic field is a circle. So I've drawn it here. And we know from the right hand rule that if the current is flowing in this direction, that if we curl around our fingers, the magnetic field will sort of trace circles out around that wire. So we could start with either side of Ampere's law. Let's start with the left-hand side. So first we need to figure out B dot dr. Now dr, uh, if you, in its most general form, if we're working in cylindrical coordinates, is r hat times dr plus phi hat times r d phi plus z hat times dz. Now, because our magnetic field is always curving around this circle, it's only ever pointing along the phi direction. And so we don't have to worry about the z part because there's never a magnetic field pointing along z. And we don't have to worry about the r hat part because there's never a magnetic field pointing outward like this. So now if we integrate both sides, we integrate b dot dr. Because of symmetry, B has the same magnitude at every point around our circle, and R has also the same value because we're integrating over a circle. So we can pull both of those constants out of the integral, and we're left integrating d phi over a range of 0 to 2 pi or minus pi to pi. And so this is just equal to B times 2 pi R. And now for the right side, the right side is fortunately a lot easier. All we need to do is find the current that penetrates through a surface that we attach to this loop. So if we attach sort of the most obvious surface, which is this one, the one that's in plane with the loop, we see that the current only penetrates the surface at a single point. So it only, well, let's draw it at the, at the center. The current is only penetrating our surface at one point. And so the penetrating current, I pen, you'll sometimes see it as I enclosed, is just equal to I, the current carried in the wire. So finally, we can set these two equal to each other. B times 2 pi R is equal to mu naught times I. And we can solve for B. And we'll get that B is equal to mu naught I divided by 2 pi r. And this is the magnitude of our magnetic field at some distance away from our wire r. If we wanted to turn this into a vector, we could do that by adding a little phi hat to indicate that it's circling around in the angular direction. Now, that's not strictly necessary, at least in intro physics, you can usually just work with magnitudes of B fields, and then use the right hand rule to figure out what direction it's pointing. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon, your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind the scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.